So what would the millennial rule be like? It varies from person to person and group of people to group of people. Three ruling factors in the millennial rule. One new. That's the issue. There's, there's overlap and there are certain similarities but not identical ones that they're all the same rule. A lot of people try to do that. They take, oh, the, the Mosaic Law period was a period of, of A, and that's similar to the same in the church age, so they're one and the same. You can't do that. They all have to match up perfectly. Isn't that true? Three ruling factors. One new, human conscience, human government, and the new theocratic rule of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody tries to tell me, oh, we're in that millennial rule right now because Jesus Christ rules. Where is he? He's supposed to be physically present in a brand new gorgeous temple in Jerusalem and uh, all these other things. Oh, they don't. That's not there. Well, it's not the same thing. So, apparently the seventh dispensation will have three ruling factors which God will use to govern the world. Human conscience, human government, plus the theocratic rule of Christ inasmuch as the seventh dispensation will be the final one. It will be characterized by the final fulfillment of the promises which God made to Abraham and his seed. Once promises are fulfilled, they cease to be promises. Thus, promise will no longer be a ruling factor in the last dispensation. In addition, although salvation will be continued to be by grace throughout the seventh dispensation, dispensation, grace will not function as a ruling factor. The evidence for this is that during the theocratic rule of Christ, those who rebel against the righteous rule will be executed. And those nations which refuse to go up to Jerusalem to worship the king and celebrate the Feast of Booths, booths will be punished. Zechariah 14, 16, and 19. Largely, uh, no water, no rain. Go ahead and grow some crops. There's not going to be any rain. Or come to Jerusalem and honor the Lord. So the most significant ruling factor of the seventh dispensation will be the righteous rule of Christ over the entire earth. The rule will have a theocratic government in which the rule of God will be administered worldwide through his representative Jesus Christ and through us who co-rule, depending upon our faithfulness. Some more, some less, some not at all, depending upon our faithfulness. So get busy now, make sure you you get the advantage that God has given you and encourages you as your coach. The Holy Spirit is your coach. Go ahead. Go in this direction. Don't go there. Yeah, and you'll get success, especially in eternity. The special revelation which God gave concerning the seventh dispensation is contained in numerous Old Testament passages, passages dealing with some of the major biblical covenants and prophecies concerning characteristics of the future kingdom. Gospel passages such as Matthew and these three uh, spots, Acts 3, 19-21, passages in the epistles, such as 1 Corinthians 15 and Ephesians 1 and Hebrews 6, 5. When you read these and you're not familiar, go and read them. And the Revelation of 21 to, to 6. According to this special revelation, the, the Messiah Jesus will restore the theocratic kingdom of God, which was on earth before man's fall, but was lost through that fall. Just like a, a flick of a, a motion of amount of time, and that paradise is lost by man's uh, rebelling through the devil's uh, words. The absolute righteous, just rule of God will enforced will be enforced worldwide. Nature will be restored to its pre-fall condition. The, the climate and natural elements will be controlled perfectly for the good of man. There will be unprecedented growth and future, future, fruit uh, and fruit. Fruitage of trees. Okay. Never heard of fruitage. Okay. And also animals will experience great productivity. Food will be abundant. All animals will be tame and vegetarian in diet. Diseases and deformities will be abolished. Human life will experience Great longevity, longevity, that's not us, will be transformed into resurrection bodies as part of the church. World will be abolished. Satan will not be able to instigate any activity on the earth until the end of that millennial rule. Man will be required to submit to the righteousness rule of Messiah. 
I'm just uh, astonished that the, the devil is going to be uh, held captive, unable to do anything he wants to do in, uh, in, in the under, underworld. And uh, then he's re released for a while and he rebels again. You think he, he, <laughs> there's more control over the earth during the millennial rule and great things are happening, great productivity. Why would people want to follow Satan as well? So man's responsibility during the seventh dispensation will be to obey God on the basis of conscience, human government, and the theocratic rule of Christ. This responsibility will subject man to the following test. Will he obey God on the basis of these three ruling factors? Secondary rules governing human behavior. We have the absolute theocracy of Christ. All these references. Please go read them. Take the time to do that. You can go to the website and look under this title heading dispensation.htm click on that you can key that in click it I'll go to the, the uh, alphabetical index of topics so they have the absolute theocracy of Christ the resurrected believers shall reign with Christ according to their faithfulness. New the New Covenant with Israel will be incorporated. Notice this guy, uh, Showers, Ronald Showers, got, gets, the, gets it. The New Covenant is with Israel. It's not the church. We will all will worship Christ in Jerusalem. Or, yeah, he writes that in, or have droughts. See, I said, no water? You don't want to worship the ruler, your creator? No water. He's being very uh, merciful, too. Strict enforcement of civil law stops crime. Boy, well, I'd love to see justice in this earth right now, especially during the pandemic. Length of biological life restored. So all kinds of animals and fruit and uh, people. Uh, restoration beyond their comprehension. I, I didn't think it would be this good. Peace restored in animal kingdom. became Become plant eaters. So you don't have lions and tigers eating other animals. Restored productivity in plant kingdom. They've done some experiments, I think, in Arizona with a, a geodesic dome or something, and, and the, the fruit and the smaller animals and insects are huge. Man will fail the test of the last dispensation. Wow. That's the shocker. Some unsaved individuals will rebel outwardly against Christ's rule during his reign. And you have these passages. You, know, you say, I don't, I don't believe that. Check me out. Prove me wrong. Hear the, hear the citations. See if that isn't true. Others will not rebel outwardly, but they will chafe inwardly. They will despise the absolute righteous rule of Christ, but will know better than to rebel outwardly. Until, what? When the seventh the dispensation ends. There it is. Until the, it ends. And Satan is released from the abyss. He's like the catal uh, catalyst. Okay, guys, you don't like it? Join me. These people will follow Satan in his last revolt against God's rule. That's just simply insane. For a being that is intelligent as Satan is, notice his brilliance in, in mentality is not going to uh, stop him from realizing you don't stand a chance. Now, this failure of great multitudes of people in spite of the perfect government and exceptional conditions of the seventh dispensation will demonstrate that the ultimate cause of man's failure and rebellion throughout history is not his external environment and circumstances, but his own inward, sinful nature, which rejects the rule of God and asserts self-rule. When I read this now, I think, yes, I've got a sin nature, and I've got to be very much aware of being misdirected. Open your mind up to the Holy Spirit that's within you, those who have trusted alone in Christ alone. And a lot of the times, I open up my mind by opening up the Bible. Because the Bible is not an easy read. It takes time and thought. I'm doing Second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And again, the opening is difficult. There's a lot that comes up there. And you have to know, well, what was the, what was the ending in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, which overlaps. Those chapter headings aren't actually always in the best position. In this case, it's not in a good position. So anyway... This failure of great multitudes of people, in spite of the perfect government and exceptional, exceptional conditions of the seventh dispensation, 
They don't have to worry about food anymore. We'll demonstrate that the ultimate cause of man's failures and rebellion throughout history is not his external environment and circumstances, but his own inward sinful nature, which rejects the rule of God and asserts self-rule. No matter, this is, you know, your father and your mother, hopefully they raise you up and give you all kinds of wonderful benefits in love, and yet you still rebel against that. Remember when you were a teenager? Doesn't make any sense. Man's failure in conjunction with the seventh dispensation will bring God's judgment. Those people who would rebel outwardly during Christ's reign will be executed. Wow. Yes. In addition, God will crush the huge revolt, which will take place immediately after the seventh dispensation by sending fire to destroy the human rebels and casting Satan into the lake of fire for everlasting torment. Okay, be right back. Chicken's ready. I'm learning to be a better cook. I'm a terrible cook, actually, so I keep it simple. I just boil the chicken and then throw the raw vegetables and carrots, which taste better anyway, uncooked. And then I've got some ready-made turkey. Put it all together. It tastes delicious. I try to fancy it up a little bit. The only thing I would say is try um, honey nut oats cereal. Sprinkle it or crush it up a little bit. Sprinkle it over some of your food sometimes. It delivers such a delicious taste. Conclusion, dispensational theology is indeed scriptural and it never fails to glorify God. Key elements of dispensational theology is exposition of the biblical philosophy of history. This guy is a really good writer, I'm telling you. Earlier in this study, it was noted that in order for an exposition of the biblical philosophy of history to be valid, it must contain certain necessary elements. Now that dispensational theology has been surveyed as a system, it is essential to determine how it deals with these those necessary elements as it attempts to exposit the Bible's philosophy of history. There's a philosophy, there's a point of view, there's a frame of reference, and the Bible goes into nitpicking details and proves it out. Other people have their uh, opposing point of view, but they don't do what the Bible does. Language, context, and logic. Give evidence for each one of your conclusions and corroborated, repeated. Repetition is the art of learning. Did you know that? That's why I'm being so detailed here. So maybe you'll get a chance to understand these things and explain it to other people because it's within the framework of everybody else's uh, mentality of, of accountable age to understand. Some take a little longer than others. Some don't take enough time, no matter how smart they are. If you don't take enough time to study the details, you're going to come out like, like people who are really, really intelligent. That's why in uh, Corinthians it talks about the wisdom of God versus the wisdom of man. That's what I'm on right now. The wisdom of man relative to what the Bible issues are, subjects and so on, is no wisdom at all. It's the cherry picking thing. You pick a cherry here, an apple there, a rock there, a stick and throw it all together. So, the key element... Number one, dispensational theology's ultimate purpose is to glorify God toward which each dispensation, or in the Greek it's economia or economy, moves and which is fully confirmed in Scripture. I'm going into this to show you why I'm, I'm not just pulling this out of a hat. Introduction. The first necessary element of a valid exposition is an ultimate purpose of goal for history toward the fulfillment of which all history moves. According to dispensational theology, the ultimate goal of history is, to, is for God to glorify himself by demonstrating the fact that he alone is the sovereign God. The Bible ascribes great glory to God, indicating that everything is for his glory. It calls him the God of glory, the Father of glory, and the King of glory, and so on. It declares that his name is glorious. Absolutely. And I'm so glad reading this and understanding the scripture I need to have only God and God alone over over me, giving me perfect things to follow for my own blessing, eternal and temporal as well. It declares that his name is glorious and expresses the desire that the whole earth be filled with his glory. We benefit. 